Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. I am in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting Judd Coon Chevrolet, and I'm checking out a 2016 Chevrolet Spark in the 1LT trim level. Really amazing little car that has, surprisingly, uh, a pretty good amount of room on the inside. It gets fantastic gas mileage on the highway, 41 on the highway, just such amazing vehicle. So they've completely redesigned the 16 model. So let's go ahead and check it out. The name of the color of this vehicle is really awesome. It's called the Mo Toasted Marshmallow. Toasted Marshmallow. So hopefully my camera's picking up the color. It's kind of a off-white, I guess you can say, maybe a really light tan. But I uh, just thought that was a really fantastic name. So the wheels are alloy wheels, painted silver, 15 inch alloy wheels with disc brakes here in the front, ventilated disc brakes here in the front, and drum brakes in the back. So here in the front, looking pretty sharp. It looks, uh, I think it looks a lot better than the previous model. And you have the halogen reflector headlights here in the front, as well as your fog lights here at the bottom, all powered by halogen bulbs. Now, when you put this vehicle in gear, the park, the uh, daytime running lights will turn on. So, and you can turn that feature on, on and off if you want to. But just overall, it looks really good. I mean, it's just a, they did a really good job with the 16 model in my opinion. So this is what the key looks like. You have the lock and unlock buttons there, a panic button there at the bottom, and you have a switchblade style key which is pretty cool let's go ahead and take a look here on the inside all right there's the inside of the passenger door soft to the touch surfaces right here for your arm the rest of it is a you know a hard plastic and then you have some accents here which really go well with the toasted marshmallow exterior color you have some storage space there at the bottom power windows power door locks little handle as well as a little storage space there as well there's your threshold manually adjusted seats black interior with a cloth seat that has a kind of a pattern there with like cubes and stuff on the inside which is pretty neat and the seats are surprisingly comfortable they kind of look kind of plain regular seats but when you actually sit in there adjust it they really are really comfortable and you have plenty of leg room really so this is with the seat all the way back so there's your seat all the way back. You have plenty of room there. You have a little storage pocket, a little cubby there in the, in the dash. So you can have it like a quick access spot. And check it out. Glove compartment is pretty good size. All smooth plastic on the inside, so it's easy to clean, in and out, clean it out. But the accents here, it's kind of like a eggshell. It kind of matches almost directly the, uh, the exterior color. Here's the inside of the back door. Now the back door is much smaller and more plain than the the front uh, everything is smooth plastic you don't have any kind of uh, cushion or anything you do have a place to put your arm there there's your threshold and here's your cloth seats here in the back you have a little cup holder there in the center and a little place to put something there in the center so you don't have any center passenger space and you do have a cup holder that you can share with the front passengers if you need to there but I put this seat all the way forward now the driver's seat is all the way back just to kind of give you an idea of the flexibility of your leg room here in the back so when the front seats all the way back it does diminish the leg room quite a bit but you do have the ability to adjust that if needed now the cargo space is kind of small in the back which we'll see in just a second but to alleviate that if you don't have any back seat drivers or at least one or less or whatever you can fold the seats down so this can kind of add to your cargo space. To do that, you just grab right here in the front, right there, lift up, kind of forcefully, and this kind of flips up like so, like that. And then you have this little lever there, and you fold the seats down. So it's pretty easy. You just got to know how to do it, and this really adds to your cargo space. And you can still have a passenger on that side as well. The fuel door is a locking fuel door, and it's on the passenger side. So let's go ahead and unlock it. So with the fuel door being on the passenger side, you can always use that as, as an excuse to have them pump the gas for you. Okay, so there's your cap. You have a little tether here, and it has a little place to hang the string, string there to keep the cap away from the really nice 
toasted marshmallow color, but it also keeps you from losing a cap as well. Let's take a look here at the back. Pretty neat looking tail lights. You have this spoiler up here with the third brake light. Wiper here on the back. So to open up the back, you also have a backup camera hidden under here as well. But to open up the back, you just a little button under here, you just push that and it kind of unlatches and goes up. And here's your cargo space. Now you can see, considering this is a small vehicle, your cargo space is, you know, fairly small, I would say. And uh, you have this little tray place up here that's removable. But this is when you would, if you need to, you know, carry something bigger. I mean, this is normal, normal size. You're not picking up, uh, you know, not carrying a huge amount of stuff with you in this type of car. But if you need to, of course, you can fold the seats down. Now, the seats are a 60-40 split, so you can fold down one or the other and get a combination of cargo and passenger space if you need to. You also have the latch system or isofix system for car seats, so you have your anchors down in here for that. So under this cover is your spare tire. You also have some tools under here as well. And I guess in a pinch, you probably could use some space around the spare tires if you need to. Now, some new vehicles do not have a spare tire, so definitely want to check before you buy a vehicle. Um, of course, this one does, so just want to keep that in mind. You don't always get a new car with a spare tire. Starting the vehicle is fairly traditional. Just, well, after you do the flip key, the thing there. But once you get that out, you just turn the key in to start it up. So here's the floorboard on the driver's side and you see you have quite a bit of space there. You also have a lower down center console to allow space for your knee there. You have the accelerator and brake, accelerator and brake pedals there, but here on the left you have a place to put your left foot. Now it's just carpeted, it's not covered up with anything. Um, now you could get a, a mat that maybe covers that up, but, but that, having that place for your left foot is, is imperative for me. Makes it the longer trips more comfortable. So let's go and take a look under the hood. Now to open up the hood, there's a little latch, just a tiny bit to the left of the uh, emblem here, right in here. You just reach in and it's kind of, it's at the bottom. So you reach down, move it to the right, and lift the hood up. So you have a fairly small hood here, so it's not that heavy. You have the prop there in the hood, so it just kind of swings down and secures the hood right here in the little spot there. So here's your engine. It's a 1.4 liter Ecotec 98 horsepower engine with 94 pound-feet of torque. So it's a four-cylinder and it's mounted to a CVT transmission, continuously variable transmission. So that allows uh, the vehicle to stay in the right gear ratio. I mean precisely the right gear ratio at all times, giving you the highest performance and fuel economy the vehicle is capable of giving you. So the battery is insulated, which helps out in the winter time. And you can actually see some engine here. Uh, the plastic cover covers up some of the engine, but we can look around it and kind of check it out. Pretty smooth and quiet engine as well. Let's take a look at the driver's door. So the driver, driver's door is just like the other side. You have some soft to the touch there handle storage pockets there at the bottom door lock controls now you have some more buttons for your windows uh, you have the front and back now this is the automatic here in the front automatic up and down the other windows are you have to hold it so the all of them are you have to hold it the only automatic one is the uh, the drivers here side mirrors are adjusted here you just pick a side left or right and then you can adjust it the way you want using this little joystick. Right in here is your headlight controls. Now it has the daytime running lights, which you can turn on and off by bumping it like that. So uh, you can go like that to turn on or off the 
daytime running lights you have the automatic feature there parking lights and then the headlights there and then the fog lights are turned on and off by pushing this button there's your dimmer switches for your interior gauges traction control button there you can turn it off it's always on unless you turn it off all right so let's go ahead and take a look here on the inside Let me your leg room. I'm really surprised with the leg room and the knee room there. I'm six feet tall and you know, I'm pretty comfortable in this vehicle. I'm the head room. I mean, there's several inches above my head. So just a very roomy small car. So before we get started on the inside, let's go ahead and take a quick peek at the window sticker. And you can of course use the pause button to get the detailed information that you want. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the steering wheel. Now the steering wheel is a synthetic material that's a really good thickness. It gives a little bit in your hand so it doesn't dig into your bones while you're trying to drive. And it has a very interesting, perfect texture for grippiness. Uh, so you're gripping the steering wheel, you don't feel like it's too tacky feeling, but it doesn't feel too slick. It's a really good, really good texture for just kind of gripping the steering wheel and just overall driving it's very comfortable and it doesn't feel cold uh, it just has that really good quality synthetic steering wheel so you have some perforations there at the bottom uh, for grip but also for looking cool of course gotta have that and then you have these functional grips up here grip extender or you can kind of kind of contours for your thumb which is pretty cool so you have quite a few buttons here on the steering wheel here on the right side, you have your volume for your radio. You can cycle through your presets using this button on your radio. So you can see right there, it's just kind of cycling through. And then you have your Bluetooth controls here, so you can make calls and receive calls using this side. And then down here, you can hang up or mute the radio with that button. So here on your left is your cruise control. You can turn it on there, off here. You can set it by pulling it down. You could change through your speeds by going up and down. Here on the right side is your windshield wiper controls for both front and rear. And on the left is your turn signal. But you also have a little menu button, which we'll get to in just a second. So right here is your gauges. You have your fuel gauge here on the far left, RPMs, and then... Right here is your speedometer, which goes up to 120 miles an hour, which is pretty cool. But you notice it's kind of like a circle within circles there to kind of save space. But here on the right, you can see it has like this little digital screen. So pushing this menu button will cycle through different information. So right now we have your odometer at the bottom, what gear you're in. But right here in the center is how many miles you can drive the car before you need to get gas. That's not really accurate because the vehicle's new and hasn't even been driven on the highway yet. So let's go ahead and push this menu button so you can see it's changing. So now uh, how long your oil life there and it goes back to there. Now you can cycle through using this little dial by going up and down. So we can kind of cycle through this average miles per hour, which is nine average miles per gallon. Actually, that's your uh, current miles per gallon. There's your average, and then there's a timer, which you can reset, and then miles, and then it goes back to there. So just kind of give you an idea of you can have more information, basically, on that little screen besides just what it shows. I also want to mention that the dashboard is really good at not reflecting light. So right now, the, the sun is really bright, and it's, it's shining there on the dash. That's the reason why I have the shade up, but you can see it's not really too bright. Uh, the, the, the dash does a really good job of absorbing and you know scattering that light so it's not glaring in your eyes. So let's go ahead and take a look at the touch screen. You can see it's surrounded by this piano black plastic, which is looking pretty cool. Really accents the, the screen here. So right now we're on the home screen. So when you push the home screen, you'll, it'll show these little icons. Nice big clock over there. You have the outside temperature and the date, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and hit audio. This is what show you what the your radio is doing. So you can change the source, 
AM FM satellite radio, you have USB, you can also play music through a Bluetooth device or an auxiliary input, which is all awesome. Let's go ahead and hit the home button to go back out of that. Gallery, this is where you can, when you connect a device, uh, you can actually look at videos apparently and pictures. I hadn't tried this yet, but this is a pretty, pretty cool feature. Now you have your phone. Once you can pair your phone through Bluetooth, but you can also plug in your Android or Apple and install the appropriate program through this projection button. So right now it's not going to show anything, but once you plug in your smartphone, it will install Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, whichever is appropriate. And that way you can use all the features of that, which is pretty cool. Endless settings in here. You can adjust pretty much anything you want all in there just to kind of give you an information there and OnStar of course is right there so I like the fact that it has this really easy to navigate uh, home screen can't go wrong there just below the touch screen of course we see the home button change through stations on your radio or tracks you have a traditional volume knob there in the center and another phone button on that side four-way flashers are here and down here is your climate control so you have your temperature fan speed and where you want the air to blow and you can recirculate the air by pushing that you can turn on your AC by pushing that so pretty easy system to use so down here you'll find your USB port and auxiliary input plus a 12 volt power supply and you have this neat little quick access storage compartment down here two cup holders which are separated by an empty space to allow you to use it for your cell phone or whatever okay so here's your shifter and it's really handy, easy to get to, and it kind of it looks pretty cool too because it has this chrome and black matching this portion up here. So let's go ahead and put it in reverse. And when you put it in reverse, pops up the backup camera. And you can turn on and off the guidelines there. And the guidelines are fixed. So when you're backing up, it just kind of gives you an idea of, the, of distance while you're backing up. Because it is a wide angle lens, so you it's a little bit distorted on the corners. But you can see from the bumper all the way to the sky and all around. So, you know, kind of helps out with not hitting something. So the, the whole idea is visibility and not, uh, you know, clarity there. Okay, so let's go ahead and neutral. There's drive. This is your normal drive position. It's going to cycle through the gear ratios where appropriate. And you can go into a low range. Now the low range is basically telling the vehicle that you need some more engine braking, so like going down a hill or something like that. Um, so you're just kind of emphasizing the lower gear ratio instead of the higher gear ratio. Now of course it's going to diminish your fuel economy when you're in there, but um, that's available if you need it. There's your parking brake right there. You have a little storage compartment just below it place to put your sunglasses or something over here and then you have a cup holder there so the rearview mirror has a few buttons you have your OnStar buttons so you can actually uh, communicate with OnStar people you also have a voice recognition button up here and an emergency button here I don't know if that actually calls 911 or what but uh hadn't <laughs> tried it yet but the voice recognition let's go ahead and push that so you can hear what it sounds like OnStar ready it has this menu down here cancel there is currently no active route. Returning to the main menu. OnStar ready. Cancel. Cancel. Thank you. Goodbye. Just kind of give you an idea of what it sounds like. And of course you can turn the volume up and down. It's quite loud right now. Okay, so up here you have some interior lights that you can turn on or off. But you also have the ability to put it in the center position to where the... When you open up the door, the interior lights will turn on. There's your microphones for your Bluetooth system there. A visor has some mirrors. Has a mirror there. Has a place to put your driver's license or something there. Registration. And there's your visor. Pretty much the same thing on the passenger side. Let's take a look at the visibility back here. See what it looks like. So you can see there it has a kind of a small window but the uh, right now the way the headrests are located they're not really getting in the way so you can see out pretty good really good there and you kind of look over your shoulder you can see blind spots pretty good now other trimmer levels you can get 
a blind spot monitoring system if that's something you're interested in but overall you know the, the mirrors and everything do an adequate job you also have a backup camera all right so there you have it 2016 Chevrolet Spark 1LT trim level so if you have any questions comments leave it in the comment section Thank you for watching and thank you to Judd Coon Chevrolet in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for allowing me to show off an awesome car. And I'll see you guys next time. Have you ever wondered what this little square cover is for? Now I made a video, a video of this before, but it's one thing that I kind of didn't know for a long time what this little cover was for and what it is. It's a little cover that you can pop open and then there's a screw hole and that's where the tow hook screws into. So it, tows, it hooks directly into the steel of the vehicle so it could be easily tied down on a tow truck or shipping, um, you know, transporting, stuff like that. So that's what those little square covers are for. It's pretty interesting.